know, some of y'all might be from the Tinley tribe, the Limba tribe, the Kono tribe, but what we come to show you is that you're from the 12 tribes of Israel. That's right. Now, when you look up the history from the people in Sierra Leone, it'll tell you that they migrated from Israel to Ethiopia, from Ethiopia to Mali, then from Mali, you end up right here in Sierra Leone. Bring it out. Now, what we're trying to show y'all that you the Israelites according to the Bible. They're like the brother read in Deuteronomy 28. Go back to Deuteronomy 28, read verse uh, 15. Listen to this, y'all. Now, I want y'all to pay attention to what's coming out. Because we're about to find out that you got the greatest history on the planet Earth. That's right. Read. Verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken. So Moses gave the Israelites blessings for obedience and he said they'll be cursed for their disobedience to God's commandments read if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day that all these curses shall come upon thee so Moses told the Israelites you break my commandments all this evil gonna come upon you Bring it out. read on and overtake thee Curse shall thou be in the city. Curse shall you be in the city. Every city you go to all over the earth, our, po our people populate the poorest communities. Any city you go to, America, Amsterdam, uh, Sierra Leone, you go to the Bahamas, Haiti, wherever you go, you see our people living in the worst because even conditions on the planet are real. And curse shall thou be in the field. But not our people slaving in the diamond mines to get diamonds for the white man. Was not our people slaving in the gold mines to get gold for who? The white man? Was that not us? We was cursed in the city, we was cursed in the field. Right. How people get, a lot of our people that was in Sierra Leone was sold to what? Sold to America. Sold to American slaves, sold to Haiti slaves, sold to Jamaican slaves. They were prophesied in the Bible. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Listen to this. I'm going to show you. Hold this sign up right here. I got you. I got you. I'm going to show y'all that according to the Bible, the Israelites were going to slavery on cargo slave ships. Did that happen to the people in Sierra Leone? So, so the people, this sister said no. Sister that said no. Come here, sis. Come here, sis. The sister that's hiding right there. So you mean to tell me the people in Sierra Leone was it taken into slavery on ships? Yes. Okay, that did happen. Well, let me show you that it's written in the Bible also. Wait, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Now listen to this, y'all. Y'all pay attention. Listen, read that again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. And the Lord shall bring you into Egypt again with ships. Now let me show y'all Egypt. Egypt is a synonymous for another word in the Bible. Read what you got. Egypt is synonymous for bandage. God was saying he's going to bring us into bandage again with ships. Let's prove it. Listen, y'all need to pay attention. Because you ain't going to hear this. This ain't going to be taught in your schools. This ain't going to be taught in your churches. Your pastor lie. They false prophets. They ain't going to tell you the truth. They ain't going to tell you what you need to do to get out of these conditions you're in. Listen to this. Read. The book of Exodus, chapter 20. Verse 2, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. So what did our uh, God call the land of Egypt, the what? Bondage, the house of bondage. All right, all praise We got sister right here, she listening. Now go right back to do number 28 and 68. Listen, read. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Into what? What's another word for Egypt? Bondage. He said, I'm going to bring you into bondage again, read. With ships. With ships. Our people went into bondage by way of cargo slave ships. We were looking from Sierra Leone to the Americas. We were looking from Sierra Leone to Puerto Rico, to Haiti, to Jamaica, to Cuba, from Sierra Leone to Great Britain. That happened to our people. Why? Because God said, if you break his commandments, right. if you break my commandments, these evils was going to happen to you. What y'all going to learn to find out the Bible is a true book. But guess what? The white man got hold of our book. What a beast that. He gave us his image as Christ. You know these people don't love our people. They come here and colonize the land. Sit up there. They take the diamonds. They take the gold. They take it back to their countries and build their countries up. Right. And then they leave our countries in a state of poverty. And then at the same time, I tell you, well, look, he coming back to save everybody. 
I don't know if not one white man on earth that'll die for any one of you. But our people, but guess what? Jesus Christ, the black Messiah, he came and died for our people's sins. I'm going to give you another curse that happened to our people for breaking the commandments of God. Give me Deuteronomy 28, verse 37. Bring it out. Read. The book 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment. A proverb. He said, we're going to become an astonishment. An astonishment means a great wonder. A great wonder. All nations look at us with amazement. Read on. And a byword. And a byword. What is bywords they call our people? Niggas, porch markets, cones. Guess what? Sierra Leone is a byword. God called you the Israelites. God called you Judah, Benjamin, Levi, Ephraim, Manasseh, Simeon, Zebulon, Gad, Reuben, Asher, Issachar, Nathalie. Not Timber, not Limba, not Kono. Them ain't your tribes. These are your true tribes right here. Read on. Among all nations. All, the, all nations we go, we called outside our God-given name. I bet you a lot of y'all got the names of your, the last name of your slave masters. What's your last name, sis? Yeah. Huh? Liver? Fibble. 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 What's your last name, bro? Abulation. Yeah, come close. Last name. Come close. Come close. What's your last name? Cecil. Who? Cecil. Cecil. These are last names of French. French last names. Our, our slave masters that came and conquered us, and guess what? They give you their last name. Who was that what? That we still conquered, proving that we still slaves. God gave us the name. Israel. It's power in the name Israel. A lot of y'all, how many of y'all go to church out here? A lot of y'all go to church out here. How many of y'all knew that you was the Israelites that the Bible is speaking about? How many of y'all knew that? The pastor ain't teaching you that, so you said you knew that. Well, bro, you gotta, hey, you gotta come join us. You gotta keep the commandments of God. That's why we're in this condition now. Now look, give me uh, do number 28, verse 32. Listen to this, read. Now I'm gonna get another curse. So look, what we done read so far? Remember, these curses was going to be upon the Israelites for a sign and a wonder who we are. One curse that we read is that we was going to go on slavery with ship. Did not that happen to the people of Sierra Leone? Yes. Another curse that we read that our names was going to be changed. Did not that happen to the people in Sierra Leone? Yes. Another curse that we read is that you was going to populate the poorest communities anywhere on earth. And also, you was going to be cursed in the field. Cotton fields, the diamond mines, the gold mines, slave and working without pay. Did not that happen to our people here? Yes. So these are signs of who the Israelites are. Give me the number 28, verse 33. Read. Bring it out. Verse 33. The fruit of thy land. Say the fruit of thy land. Talk about thy resources, your diamonds, your gold, your bauxite. Read on. And all thy labors. And all your labors, read. Shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up. When the white man came, he took the resources. And he's still eating up the resources to this day. Why do you think America's so powerful? You know the only reason why European countries survive is off African countries. Right. Off the diamonds in Sierra Leone. Off the cocoa in Ghana. Off the, uh, the, the rubber trees that was in, uh, the rubber plantations that was in Liberia. That's the only reason how these European countries survive. It's off your resources. They take your resources, build their countries, and then leave our people in poverty. Then give you this image and say, pray to him, and you're going to get the kingdom of heaven. But meanwhile, guess what? Their kingdom of heaven is already on earth. They got the kingdom of the Netherlands, the kingdom of Great Britain. Uh, Britain. They got the kingdom of America. It's time for our people to wake up. Read. Which is the fruit, the fruit of thy land and all thy labor. So the fruit of thy land is talking about your resources, your gold, your diamonds, your cocoa, your rice. Read on. Shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up. They're going to come and take your resources and they're going to eat it up by themselves. Read. And thou shalt be only oppressed. And it say, thou shalt be only oppressed. Who out here oppressed? How many of people out here oppressed today? Well, are you oppressed? You oppressed? You oppressed? Hey, I'm oppressed. I'm tired of seeing my people in these conditions. I'm tired of them oppressing us in America, Great Britain, Sierra Leone, Ghana, Liberia, Cameroon, Senegal. I'm tired of seeing my people being oppressed. That's why we're here today. It's time for y'all to wake up and rise up. Come join us to do what? To take this world back. That's what God waiting on. Right. God waiting on you to wake up, repent, keep his commandments so I can give you the earth. 
But as long as you like living like, as uh, long as you sit up there and keep worshiping this image right here, you gonna sit up there and delay the coming of Christ. And a lot of y'all, guess what? Some of y'all gonna repent out here today, some of y'all ain't. Some of y'all gonna keep believing in this, and when the true black Messiah comes, you gonna get put to death. I'm gonna show you something. Give me Isaiah 1 and 3. Hold it. Isaiah 1 and 3. Our people, the only people on the planet Earth don't know who they are. We the only people that don't know who we are, and we the only people that don't worship a God that look like us. Right. If you go to China, the Chinese worship Buddha. Who the Buddha look like? Chinese. Buddha look like the Chinese. Yeah. You go to Greeks, you go to Greece, the Greek, the white people in Greece worship uh, Greek gods. How do those Greek gods look? They look like them. You go to East India, they worship Krishna. How do Krishna look? But black people, you go to all African countries and we worship with them. Do he look like us? Hell no, he don't look like us. We the only people on earth that worship a God that don't look like us. It's time for us to wake up, man. Every country worship a God that look like them. It's time for us to wake up, return to our true nationalities, as the Israelites, the Bible speaks of, and worship the true king. Now look, read what you got. The book of Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 3. The ox knows his owner. He said the ox knows, knows his owner. The ox is a dumb animal. He knows who his owner is. Read on. And the ass, his master's crib. But Israel does not know. Said, but Israel don't know. Israel don't know their true homeland. Israel don't know who they are. Read on. My, my people does not consider. He said his people don't even consider. It's time for us to wake up, y'all. You got to wake up. You got to repent. You got to come back to the commandments of God. I'm going to show you another curse that happened to us. Go right back to Deuteronomy 28. Verse 33. 34. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 34. So that thou shalt be mad for the sight of thine eyes, which thou shalt be 31, 31. Now, y'all listen. Y'all pay attention. We need y'all to listen. We need y'all to listen. Read. Verse 31. Read out, thine ox shall be slain before thine eyes, and thou shalt not eat thereof. Read. Thine ass shall be violently taken away. So he said he just going into your crops, your land, your animals going to be taken from you. Read on. Before thy feet. thy sheep shall be given unto thine enemies, and thou shalt have none to rescue them. Read on. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Whose sons and daughters was given to another race of people? They happened to us. Our sons and daughters were given to another race of people and made slaves scattered to the four corners of the earth. Read on. And thine eyes shall shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. And there shall be no might in thine hand. So when our sons and daughters was given to another people, did we have any might in our hand to get them back? When they was given to the white man, did we have any might in our hand to get them back? When Great Green came, did we have any might? No, it's just saying nobody should save us. Remember how many y'all, how many y'all know uh Bobby Ray? Bobby Ray. Is I'm saying his name right? Bobby Ray. Bobby Ray. Okay, okay, okay. I'm gonna get it. So look, remember 1898. Bobby Ray tried to fight against who? Great Britain, right? Because yeah. Great, Great Britain tried to tax the land. Now Ray was taking the diamonds and the gold. He tried to fight against them. Why? To keep our people from being oppressed. That's why the scriptures say, read that again from the top read. The fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up. Now verse 32, read. Right? 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. So Great Britain came, took our sons and daughters into slavery. Read. Right? And thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. All our people can do is cry. Imagine if somebody come take your daughter right now, come take your son, or come take your mom away from you. The scriptures say our eyes look and fail with longing for them all the day long. Right? And there shall be no might. In thy head. He said there should be no might in your head. Do we got the military might to fight against our oppressors? No. Even when Bible Ray tried to do it, he ended up failing. The only reason why he failed because the white man set the forces on fire. You know what I'm saying? They got uh, high advanced weapons in us. That's the only reason he failed. But he was whooping the hell out of them. Remember, uh, and I'm going to show you how the white man always try to work to sell our people out. Remember with Bible Ray. He said, look, I'll give you a hundred pounds 
the dude captured Babu Ray from me. But what Babu Ray tell our people? He said, hey, I'll give you 5,000 pounds if you bring that damn white man to me. You know what I'm saying? That's how we got to do, man. We got to stop selling each other out. You know what I'm saying? We got to move in that spirit right there. We got to stick together. But Babu Ray, he tried to save our people from uh, Great Britain, but he failed. Read that again. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. And there shall be no might in thine hand. The fruit of thy... It's saying there shall be no might in thy hand. Read up. The fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up. And thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed always. So it's saying that our resources are going to be taken from us. Now give me Luke 1 verse 68. Because I made a statement. I made a statement. Remember, Babu Ray tried to liberate our people from Great Britain and keep the uh, Queen from taxing us. But here yeah, we still pay. We still being taxed by them to this day. They still taking the resources and the gold. I'm gonna show you who the Savior is. Read the Book of Luke, chapter one, verse sixty-eight. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for He hath visited and redeemed His people. Israel is His people. Y'all remember, God don't love. How many y'all think God loves everybody? You think God loves everybody? Who else? Yeah. Think God loves? But God, you think God loves everybody? Who else? Yeah. You think God? Y'all think God loves everybody, right? Yeah. Yeah. Listen to this again. Read. Yeah. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Whose yeah. God is He? It said, "Blessed be the Lord God of Israel." He's the God of the Israelites. He's only your God. Hold that real quick. Joel two and twenty seven. I'm coming back there. He's only your God. I'm going to prove to you and I'm going to show you. God don't love everybody. He only love us. He only love the Israelites. And I'm going to show you in the Bible. Read. The book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 27. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. And that I am the Lord your God. I am the Lord your God. Read. And none else. And none else. So I know a lot of y'all in the Christian church that tell you, well, that was the old covenant, right? Under the new covenant, everybody got people, right? Let's get the new covenant. Hebrews 8, verse 8. He said, the Lord, your God, and none else. The only reasons why we're in the conditions we're in is because we did what? Why are we in these conditions? Because we broke God's commandments. That's right. God said, look, you break my commandments, I'm going to punish you. I'm going to send you to slave my own ships. I'm going to have a white man come and conquer your lands. He said, look, hey, uh, you're going to work for no money. Uh, you're going to become a slave. Your name's going to be changed. You ain't going to be called by my name no more. You're going to be called by your oppressor's name. That's the only reason why we suffer. Because our people refuse to keep the commandments of God. Listen to this, read. The book of Hebrews, chapter 8, verse 8. Now, this is the new covenant right here. Because in your Christian church, your pastor tell you, well, that's the old covenant. Now, God, everybody can be grafted in. Right. Everybody can be an Israelite. That's a lie. Listen to this, read. For finding fault with them. God found fault with us. We broke his laws and went into captivity. Read. He says, Behold, the days come, said the Lord, which when, when I will make a new covenant. He said, When I will make a new covenant. So we're talking about the new covenant that was made, read. Right. With the house of Israel. Notice who he's making a new covenant with? The house of Israel. Read on. And with the house of Judah. The house of Judah. So remember these, uh, these, three, these three tribes, it's called the house of Judah, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, the southern kingdom of Israel, and the rest of the tribes were called the house of Israel, the northern kingdom of Israel. So he said, I'm going to make the new covenant with the house of Judah and the house of Israel. What a white man in on there. What a Chinese in on there. Let's keep going, read. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand, to lead them out of the land of Egypt. So he said, this covenant ain't gonna be by sacrifice. Read on. Because they continue not in my covenant. Read. And I regarded them not, said the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, said the Lord. I will put Notice who he said he's making a covenant with. The house of Israel. Why do they keep saying Israel, Israel, Israel? Read on. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts and I will be to them a God. He said I will be to them a God.
mind. Who are we talking about? The house of Israel. Read on. And they shall be to me a people. And who going to be his people? Israel. The house of Israel. God loves you. God loves you. But get that real quick, Malachi 1, real quick. Malachi 1, verse 1. God loves you. But what happened? We turned our backs on God. We started worshiping idols. We set up that we love this image right here. You want to know how we know we love this image? He got blonde hair. What our sisters do? They put blonde hair in the head. Our sisters, he got straight hair. What our sisters do? They straighten her out. God, God got her on his head like, come on. He said he's seven and nine. They ain't telling that. We love this image. And I ain't out here to put our sisters down. I'm letting you know your hair is beautiful. Your natural hair is beautiful. Because that's what God gave to you. This is how God looks. God got her like Pearl Warren. Listen to this, read. We got to sit up here. This European look, hey, we got to let it go. And we got to come back to God as the Israelites the Bible speaks of. Right. We got to come back to our traditions. We got to come back to our customs. We got to come back to our God. Reload. As long as you're sitting up there looking like they look, you ain't doing nothing but upholding his image. You upholding white supremacy above the earth. When we should be reigning supreme on earth. Read what you got. The book of Daniel, chapter 7, verse 9. Now I'm going to prove to you that the most high God, Jesus Christ's dad, got her like wool on his head. Read. Bring it out. And I beheld till the thrones were cast down. And the Ancient of Days did sit. The Ancient of Days is talking about the Most High God. Read up. Because he was here before he said, The evening and the morning is the first day. Read. Bring it out. Whose garment was white as, white as snow. He had a garment on. In order to have a world garment, you got to have what? A body. You got to have a body. Read on. And the hair of his head. It's in the hair of his head. Read. Like the pure wool. Like the pure wool. Like the pure wool. What people on planet Earth got her like pure wool? Negroes. This brother right there, her like pure wool. Her like pure wool. Her like pure wool. A lot of you sisters, her like pure wool. But guess what? You gotta take that weed out of your head. You gotta stop perming your hair. You gotta, you gotta stop following these European customs. Because you know what? I'm gonna tell you what it is. Who taught you to hate your hair? The white man taught you to hate your hair. Who taught you to hate your skin? The white man taught you to hate your skin. Some of our people be bleaching and get light. But you, why are you trying to destroy the melanin with your skin? When you absorb, when you absorb energy from the sun, which creates vitamins inside of you. Your, your, your skin, you can absorb energy from the sun and produce vitamin K. No other nation can do that on the planet Earth. But you can do that. But then you want to, it's D? Yeah, and, and create uh, vitamin D. No other nation can do that on the planet Earth. The white man is vitamin D deficient. He got to go get pills for that. But you don't have to. Read up. I beheld till the thrones were cast down. So the thrones he talking about, America going to be cast down. China going to be cast down. Uh, 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 let's give a note. The albums going to be cast down. All these thrones going to be cast down. Read. Bring it out. And the Ancient of Days did sit. The Ancient of Days is talking about the Most High God. Because he was here before, he said the evening and the morning was the first day, read. Right. Whose garment was white as snow. He got a garment on because he got a body, read. And the hair of his head like the pure wool. He said the hair on his head like the pure wool. So uh, the Most High God got wool in her. Jesus Christ got wool in her. Negroes got willing hair. So you sisters, y'all gotta learn to love your hair. Now go right back to one Luke, Luke 1 and 68. So I want y'all to think that, you know, we trying to uh, bash y'all and nothing like that. This is what they told us. This is what white supremacy taught us. But now as you learn that you're the Israelites, you gotta repent from day customs. You gotta re repent from day tradition. You gotta repent from day culture. And you gotta come back to the culture that's the most high God has given you. Wait. The book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. So he said he the Lord your God and none else, read. For he hath visited and redeemed his people. And hath raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant, David. The house of, uh, the horn of salvation is talking about Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ died for us. 
Israel only. Jesus Christ didn't die for everybody. I know a church that told you he died for everybody. He only died for the sins of the Israelites. Right. You the only ones that God made uh, the old covenant with and the new covenant. He only died for your sins. Read on. As, his, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies. You that, that we should be saved from our enemies. Because in church, they tell you, come to church and get saved. How many of y'all think you're saved out here? None of us ain't saved. Remember, Jesus Christ don't do what, Reed? Right? That we should be saved from our enemies. Why is God talking about we got enemies? He said that we should, Christ's purpose is to save us from our enemies. Name some of our enemies. The white men, who else? The Chinese is our enemies. The Arabs is our enemies. The East Indians is our enemies. Hell, the Africans is our enemies because we ain't African. We the Israelites. It's a difference between African, I mean, it's a difference between Israelites and African Hamites. Everybody that's black on the planet Earth ain't Israelites. And everybody that's black on the planet Earth ain't African. Or ain't Hamites. Read on. To perform the mercy promise to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. The oath which he swore to our father Abraham that we that he would grant unto us that we be being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear. That's the purpose of Christ, that we be delivered out of the hands of our enemies. But in order to do in order to be saved, you gotta repent. How many of y'all know how to get the kingdom of heaven? Who can tell me how to get the kingdom of heaven? What you say, bro? I can't hear you. What you say? How to get the kingdom of heaven, bro? To abide by the rules of God. Okay, that's right. And get Matthew 19, verse 16. That's how we're going to get the kingdom of heaven is abide by the rules of God. But guess what? You can't be a hero of the word. You got to be a what? You got to be a doer. You got to do what the Bible says. Read. The book of Matthew, chapter 19. Verse 16. And, and behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? So if a young man came to Christ and said, What good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Read. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? He said, Why are you calling me good? Read. There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, Keep the commandments. So he said, if you want everlasting life, if you want the kingdom of heaven, what you got to do? Read. Keep the commandments. He said, you got to keep the commandments. Now, we're going to get some of these commandments that our people got to keep, that our people break every single day. Now, look, I got to start with you, sisters. Get through number 22, verse 5. Bring it out. God gave us ceremonial laws. The Lord gave us dietary laws. The Lord gave us civil laws, moral laws, and sacrificial laws. The only laws that's done away with is the sacrificial laws. Listen to this, read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22, verse 5. How many of y'all sisters love God out here and want to get the kingdom of heaven? I'm talking about sisters, women. How many of you women love God and want to get the kingdom of heaven? Raise your hand. Yes. Okay, we got a lot of sisters out here that say they love God. Now listen to this, sis. Now, now remember. It said, in order to get the kingdom of heaven, what you got to do, sis? You got to keep the commandments, right? You got to keep the commandments. Now, you go a commandment right here. Read. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. What do women wear that pertain to men? Who? Say it again, sis. Trousers. Trousers, pants. Our women are wearing pants. So now, if you love God, it says you should not wear what pertains to a man. What do y'all sisters got to do? Stop wearing this. Stop wearing this. Stop wearing trousers. Y'all know who y'all, y'all know who taught our people that? The white woman. The white woman wants to be equal to the white man. She wants to wear the same, uh, work the same job that he worked. So guess what? They sat up there, they started a liberation movement in America for women to wear pants. And guess what they used to help in their movement? While we was fighting for civil rights, the white woman came and recruited the black woman to help her fight for women's rights. They had nothing to do with us. Because guess what? Our households was good at the time. In America, the black family was together. 
But since the white woman wants to rebel against the white man, guess what she did? She set up that she wants to wear pants, she wants the equal rights, she wants to work the same jobs as men, and uh, they end up winning. Now y'all wear pants. Now the women in America wear it all over earth. And that's against God. Read that again. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Read. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. It say neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. What is a woman's garment? Yeah. A dress. A dress. That's a woman's garment. A dress. A man don't supposed to wear a dress. And women don't supposed to wear pants. That's why when you look at TV, what you see on TV? You see men wearing pants, especially in America. It's real bad. I mean, men wearing dresses. You see, well, everywhere you go, you see our sisters in pants. So if you love God, you gotta stop wearing the pants. I'm gonna give you another law that our people break. Give the Bible chapter 11. Start at verse 45. Now look, God gave us a dietary law. How many of y'all eat the pig? Who eat the pig? Uh, you eat the pig? You eat the pig? No, it's big. Okay, who eat the, uh, who eat crab? Yes. Who eat the crab? Uh, Y'all love some crab, though. No, yeah. <laughs> okay, now nobody out here don't eat bush meat, right? Who eat bush meat? Oh, no, you can't, oh, hold on, listen to this. You can't eat the bush meat. You can't eat the bush meat. You can't eat the crab. You can't eat the pig. Listen to this, read. The, the book of Leviticus, chapter 11, verse 45. For I am the Lord that bringeth you up out of the land of Egypt to be your God. You shall therefore be holy, for I am holy. God commanded us to be holy. It's a certain way, it's certain things we do to sanctify ourselves to make us holy. Read. This is the law of the beast. He gave us the law of beasts. Guess what? It's certain things we can eat. And there's certain things we can't eat. Read on. And the law of the fowl. Read. Uh, this is the law of the beast and of the fowl and of every living creature that moveth in the waters and of every creature that creepeth upon the earth to make a difference between the unclean and the clean. You hear that? He said you need to make a difference between what's unclean to eat and what's clean to eat. Read on. And between the beast that may be eaten. He said you got to make a difference between the beast that may be eaten. Read. And the beast that may not be eaten. And the beast that may not be eaten. Now y'all want me to show y'all why this is so important? You know why we get a lot of the sicknesses we get? Because you're eating the bush meat. You're eating the pig. You're eating the crabs. You sitting up there, you destroying your temple. Now give me 1 Corinthians real quick, chapter 3. You say it was questions. Who got questions? Yes. You got a question. Hold on, what's your question? Why are you plating your ear? What you say? Just now you said that. Why am I braiding my hair? Yes. I get Numbers chapter 5. And it's 5? Number 6 and 1. That is not a, a long break. Now listen to this, Rick. The book of Numbers, chapter 6, verse 5. All the days of the vow of his separation, there shall no razor come upon his head until the days be fulfilled, in the which he separated himself unto the Lord. He shall be holy and shall let the locks of his hair, of his head, grow. So it says shall let the locks of his head grow. They call these locks what we call braids. And they call dreadlocks locks that you know y'all heard the dreads, right? You heard the dreads? Yeah, yeah. You heard the dreads, right? They call them locks and they call these locks. So you got that? You understand? Okay. You had a question? Did you have a question? Any questions? I know y'all got questions. You said they had questions. Nobody got questions? Okay, this buddy got questions. Hold on, let me see. This buddy got a question. What's going on? I, I want to know if we have a place for worship, like, like in worship in place. Okay, we're working on that right now. Hey, what do the brothers at in Sierra Leone uh, meet at right now? Huh? Oh, okay, look, just get the number on the fly. Call the number on the fly. We're working on getting a place established here. So we're working on that. Okay, brother right here. Come here, bro. Okay, why is now your guys raising up 
um, showing our identity as we are Israelites, then you, I saw an uh, image of a uh, uh, image of Christ representing a black people. Yes. Why is now you people are raising this up to us and you leave that thing that we are as the white people have already been colonized or mentality to accept those images as Christ. Why is now you people are coming up with this to now to sanitize people that indeed we need to know that Christ was black and then okay. all the other things. So okay, let me show you. I get first get John chapter eight verse thirty two. So he's saying, why uh, why is we coming now to show them the true image of Christ and then we Israelites after the white people colonized us and brought us this? So let me show you. John 8 verse 32, read. Chapter 8 verse 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Christ said you should know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The truth is that you the Israelites according to the Bible. The truth is he's black. According to the Bible. Let's get Revelations 1 now. Verse 14. The book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 14. His head and his hairs were white, like wool. And it started at 13. Now listen. Listen. We're going to give you the revelation of Jesus Christ. Christ wanted us to know his true image. You want to know how we know he wanted us to know his true image? Because it's written in the Bible. Start at 1 verse 1. Listen. The book of Revelation, chapter 1 verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him. It says, which God gave to him to do what? To show his servants. To show his servants. To show his servants, read. Things which which must shortly come to pass. Christ gave us prophecies, and Christ also gave us his image. Christ wanted us to know these things. Read on. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. Read. 13? No, two, two. Who bear record of the word of God. So John the Revelator bear record of the word of God. Read on, listen. And of the testimony of Jesus Christ. And of all things that he saw. Of all things that he saw. Let's see what he said. Turn to verse 12. Read. Verse 12. And I, and I turned to see. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. Now look, John the Revelator said, hold on, turn this this way. He said, I turned to see. So somebody, if you hear somebody talking behind you, he said, I turned to see the voice that spake with me. Read. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. He said, when he turned around, he seen seven golden candlesticks. Look, look at this image that the white man gave us. Why is none of that depicted in his image? Why is none of that depicted in the image if they said they're coming with the true word of God? Read on. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks. He said in the middle of the, hold on, hold on, let, let the brother see. In the middle of the seven candlesticks, read. One, like unto the Son of Man. He said, I seen one like unto the Son of Man. Another name was Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was called the Son of Man. Why? Jesus was the son of a man. His daddy was Joseph. Immaculate conception is a lie. Read on. Clothed with a garment down to the foot. He had a garment that went down to his foot. Read on. And girt about the paps with a golden girdle. He had a golden girdle around his waist. Remember, John the Revelator said he turned to see who was speaking to him. Read on. His head and his hairs were white like wool. The hair on his head and the hair on his face was white and woolly. That's your hair. Light woolly hair. Matter of fact, what uh, Captain, Captain Hannah and I, come here. This is how Jesus Christ's hair was. The hair on his face, on his head, white and woolly. Read on. Oh, what yeah. And his eyes, and his white as snow. As white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. It said his eyes was as a flame of fire. The eye, whites of his eyes was as a flame of fire. When you look at this image, and he got blue eyes. He got brown eyes, hey, he got green eyes, he got black eyes. What color is Jesus Christ's eyes? Because the white man showed that they don't know. So it lets you know that this image false and it's a lie right there. Read on. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Why did he say his eyes was as a flame of fire? Moses gave us a prophecy about Christ in Genesis, uh, Genesis the 49th chapter. Get that real quick. Genesis chapter 49. 
I'm going to ask y'all something about Christ. What was the first miracle that Jesus Christ did? What was his first miracle? Jesus Christ went to a wedding. It wasn't no wine there. And he turned wine into wine and a wedding. Jesus Christ drank wine. They even called him what? They called him a wine bibble. But Jesus Christ didn't get drunk. Now look, this it is, read. The book of Genesis, chapter 49, verse 12. His eyes, his eyes shall be red with wine. His eyes shall be red with wine. Why? The whites of his eyes shall be red with wine. Read on. His eyes shall be red with wine, and his teeth white with milk. So the prophecy was his eyes shall be red with wine. That's why I say his eyes are just a flame of fire. Now go back to what we said. Revelation chapter 1, verse 14. Now read. Verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So his hair on his head and the hair on his face was white and woolly. Read on. As white as snow. What a white woolly hair right here. This long stringy hair. This long stringy hair. This ain't woolly. You got hair like wool. Read. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his feet like unto fine bread. See, he said, you look down at Jesus Christ's feet. You, I see this sister feet. I see her feet. I see her feet. I see his feet. It's not their feet the same color as their face. It's not her feet the same color as her face. Yes. He said, uh, he, he said, look down at Jesus Christ's feet like unto fine brass. What color is brass? Your belt buckle is the color brass. A derivative of brown. Read on. As if they burned in a furnace. If I take your belt buckle and put it in an oven or put it in a furnace, what is it going to get? Dark. It's going to get dark. So Jesus Christ is what? Black, according to the Bible. He's a dark skinned man. Matter of fact, he might be your complexion. <laughs> hey, look, black is beautiful. That's why I said, go to Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 5. The book of Song of Solomon. Verse one, verse five. Start at one. Uh, verse one. The song of songs, which is Solomon. It said this Solomon's song. Some people sit up there and say, no. His Ethiopian lover wrote it. No. King Solomon wrote that. Read it again. Say who? The song of songs. The song of songs, read. Which is Solomon. Which is Solomon's. Read on. I am black. He said, I am black, read. But comely. But comely. I'm black but beautiful. That's what King Solomon said. How many of y'all knew that was in the Bible? How many of y'all knew you knew that was in the Bible? All praise to the Most High. So King Solomon was a black man according to the Bible. And King Solomon, Jesus Christ, great, 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 great granddaddy. <laughs> he come from uh, uh, Hebrews 7 and 14. Jesus Christ was come from the tribe of Judah. Some of y'all out here right now is from the tribe of Judah. Benjamin, Levi, Ephraim, Manessa. Read. The book of Hebrews, chapter 7, verse 14. Read. For it is evident. It is evident, read. That our Lord sprang out of Judah. That he came out of Judah. He came from the tribe of Judah. Read. Of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. So it's evident that Jesus Christ came from the tribe of Judah. The tribe of Judah was a dark-skinned tribe. Now look, I want to show you something, because you asked a good question. Go to John 10, verse 1 now. Because you said, why are we coming with all this now? You know, you ain't going to get to... Galatians 7. Galatians 7. Revelation 7. Revelation 7, if I got you. You said, uh, why are we coming here with all this stuff right now? Why are we bringing the true image of Christ, showing that our people the Israelites? Let's get Revelation 7 and 4 first. Listen to this, read. The book of Revelations, chapter 7, verse 4. Start at 3. Verse 3, saying, hurt not the... Two. Verse 2. We got it. And I saw another angel ascending from the earth, from the east, having the seal of the living God. The seal of the living God is talking about his commandments. Hold on, get that Isaiah 8 and 20. 8 and 16 and 8 and 20. The seal of, so he said, I seen an angel descending from the east. He had the seal of the living God. This is real. Let's see what the seal is. The book of Isaiah chapter 8 verse 16. Bind up the testimony. Seal the law among my disciples. What is the seal this angel got? The law. Read that again. Bind up the testimony. 
Seal the law among my disciples. Seal the law among my disciples. That's what we come to do. Seal the law amongst you. Go right back to Revelation 7 and 2. Revelation 7 and 2. Read what you got. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth. So right now the Lord holding back destruction. Y'all know destruction about to come upon this earth, right? Right now the angels is holding back the destruction. Read. And the sea, saying, hurt not the earth. He said, hurt not the earth, read. Neither the sea, neither the sea, read. Nor the trees. Till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. That's what we're here to do. Teach all the law so the servants of God can be sealed. The servants of God can be sealed. Read on, keep on. And I heard the number of them which were sealed. And there were sealed in hundred and forty and four thousand. Lord looking for a hundred and forty four thousand Israelites. Twelve thousand from each tribe. After the 12,000 from each tribe is sealed with the truth of God, the true image of Christ, the laws and the statutes and commandments, their true nationality, guess what's going to happen? The four angels that's holding back the destruction, they're going to let the destruction come upon the earth. Finish it up. Of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Now get John 10 verse 1. You got a question, sis? Come here, sis. Come on over here. I can okay. hold the mic, sir. Thank you very much for this opportunity. I had, I, I came in, I had new preaching, and it's just a little, a minor contribution. Actually, I was just talking to my students at the lecture earlier. I was just telling them that, yes, I know I'm offended a little bit with the Bible. I know that most of Images. The Bible refers to them as graven images. Yeah. yeah, that we should not worship them, we should not pay image, homage to them, and that most of these images originated from the Roman Empire when the Rome was conquered, and that the, 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 the though they accepted Christianity, but they went along with their atheist practices and yeah. images that they were worshiping, and that they folded most of these images so that their people could appreciate Christianity, but that these are not actually the pictures of Jesus. So I was just talking, them at, talking to them at the park that, yes, I know most of the things you are talking, they are true. Okay, so you do believe Jesus Christ is black according to the Bible? Um, um, no, um, I cannot say I don't believe that. Um, because uh, according to my own orientation, I never knew about a black Jesus. Though I know these, these images are grieving, but I know that um, these images are grieving. And I know that you may not, you may not be far from the truth. And, and, and looking at the geographical situation again of Israelites, um, they were more closer to blacks. If we can go back to, to uh, 600, 700 years ago, they were more closer to Africa and Africans than the white. So I was just telling them that um, I want to believe that yes, um, Jesus may not be too far from me being a black Jesus man. Jesus Christ is a black man. Yeah. We just read it in. What, what we read it in? Out of the Bible, right? Yes. We yeah. gave the true image of Christ. So may I go back? So he's, oh yeah, you can go back. Jesus Christ is described as a black man. But before you go, sis, I need you to understand that Jesus Christ is black. And you're right. Israel is what? Northeast Africa. Israel is part of Africa. You know what I'm saying? So it's on the landmass of hell, or so-called Africa. Yes, I know. So Jesus Christ is a black man according to the Bible. And that's one thing. You can't sit up there. I know a lot of our people, we want him to look like this. But this ain't Jesus Christ. And now you said something about images. We don't worship this image, but our people worship that. Look at this right here. This is an image right here from 1912 AD. You can find this in a book called Russian Icons. Hold this up. Look at this image, sis. This was painted by us when we ruled Europe in the Dark Ages. This was in a church in Russia. Look at this right here. You see the prophets? What color is it showing the prophets? It's showing the prophets is black man. It's showing Christ is black man. The people in this brown, the people in the about the Israelites that you read about in the Bible are black. Yeah, Russian icons. Yes, yeah, give Russian hey, icons. So you ever heard of Judah, right? All right, Jeremiah fourteen and two. Listen to this, sis. The, the book of Jeremiah, chapter fourteen, verse two. Judah mourning. So the subject is the tribe of Judah being in the state of mourning. They was in the Babylonian captivity at this time. Read. 
and the gates thereof language. The gates is talking about what we went, uh, what we went to pass judgment. Leader, that's why our leadership was found there. You know what I'm saying? We'll go to our leaderships at the gates and they'll have our certain issues for us. Read. They are black. What color is Judah? They are black unto the ground. They say they black unto the ground. When you go into this dirt on the ground, the farther you go in, what happens? It gets what? It gets dark. It gets dark. Now look, here go a book right here called Rush Your Icons right here. Who is this supposed to be? It's Mary, right? What color is showing Mary is? Black. black. Hey, get a light. What color? Look, look, look showing you Christ is what? In case he wanted to read. Just it's black. Now look, uh, let's get some more images. <laughs> it's more than I can find them for you. Yeah, yeah, show them for me. Yeah, get find them for me real quick. Now, get right back to the scripture. Read. Now, you know this book right here? This book right here costs about 2,000 U.S. dollars. 2,000 U.S. dollars. And they hide these images from us. Now look, give me, uh, I think Bishop know the pages. You know the pages? Here go all, here, all the kings of Israel. These are all the kings okay, of Israel. Okay, here go all the kings of the Israel right here. What color is this showing the kings of Israel? Black, black, black. Look, you can tell that they knew what white was, but if you look at the faces, the faces are dark. This is, these in old book, this book costs like $2,000. All right, read that again. Judah Mortis and the gates thereof languish. They are black yep. unto the ground. They said they are black unto the ground. So the deeper you go into the ground, the darker it gets. The darker it gets. What's up, bro? Um, I'm pushing Africans. We have the lights of skins like Moroccans, Egyptians, all these guys are lights of skins. Well, I'm going to tell you this. The Moroccans, the Arabs, they are not Africans. The people that's over there in Egyptian, now, they are not Africans. You know what I'm saying? They are not black people. No, they are Arabs. They're descendants of Arabs. And uh, remember when you read when you read in the Bible during the Greek captivity, Ptolemy took over Egypt. Ptolemy conquered Egypt. You had a dynasty called the Ptolemic uh, the Ptolemy, the, Ptolemy, the, P the Ptolemy dynasty, where white people ruled Egypt for almost a thousand years or so. Probably I know uh, the Ptolemy dynasty reigned about four five hundred years. Well, they conquered Egypt, they set up some of their images, but the ancient Egyptians was dark-skinned people. Now, look, let me show you something. Genesis 2 and 7. The Arabs came and took over, them land, uh, took over the lands. Have you ever heard of the sub-Saharan slave trade? Hey, give me that sign with the sub-Saharan slave trade, though. Sub-Saharan slave trade. Listen to this, listen to this, read this. Now, I'm going to show you something. Because he said, okay, some us dark, some us light. I'm darker than this sister. Hell, I'm darker than you. I might be almost darker than anybody out here but this brother. <laughs> I read. The book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. Okay, I'm asking so. What color is the dust of the ground? Black brown. It's different shades of brown, right? This a light brown right here. It's a dark brown. You can find dark brown if you dig into it. It's different shades of brown. All of us out here is different shades of brown. All of us, uh, us out here different shades of brown. You understand that? So it ain't going to be no one particular color. We different shades of brown. You know what I'm saying? Everybody going to just be his complexion, my complexion, or your complexion. All of us out here is different shades of brown. Matter of fact, I seen, uh, I seen, uh, I seen dust in the ground when we said yesterday, his complexion. He's a more ruddy complexion than the rest of us. Now look, read what you got. Read it again. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. It's saying the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. The dust of the ground is different shades of brown. You understand? Okay. Now look, let's get back to some of these laws. Because what laws we went over so far? I see all the sisters, they ain't broke out. A lot of them ain't broke out. What's one of the sisters, uh, laws we went over? That women should wear what pertain to men. And the sisters said trousers. We went to the dietary law, where it said you gotta make a difference between what's to eat and what's not to be eat. Like, um, oh, we didn't finish it? Go right back there. Go right back there. That's how we gonna get the kingdom of heaven. Coming back to the commandments of God. That's how we gonna overcome our enemies. Coming back to the commandments of God. As long as we keep breaking the commandments, guess what God gonna keep doing? He gonna keep fighting against our people. He gonna keep oppressing our people. Matter of fact, get Isaiah 1 and 3 again. Listen to this. 
And you got to know that you Israel in order to get the kingdom of heaven. Read. The book of Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 3. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel doth not know. My people doth not consider. The Lord said, our people don't consider who they are or where they from. Read. A sinful nation. He said our people is a sinful nation. Our people don't want to keep his commandments. Read. A people laden with iniquity. He said we full of sin. We land with iniquities. Read. A seed of evildoers. Children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel. You hear what God said? He said we forsake, we forsake them. We provoked them. This is why, the reason why all this wrath came amongst our people. Look, you, you think the white man's stronger than our people? You think the Chinese, come on, the Chinese? Y'all think they're stronger than our people, the Arabs? But everybody ruling over us. Why are they ruling over us? Because we broke the commandments of God. In order to get out of conditions we in, we got to come back to the commandments of God. You got to stop eating the unclean foods. God can't dwell in an unclean temple. Get that real quick, 1 Corinthians 3. You can't eat the unclean, you can't eat the bush meat, you can't eat the monkey, you can't eat the lizards. You can't eat it. Why? Because God departs from you. Because your temple ain't sanctified. His spirit can't dwell in an unclean temple. Read the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 3, verse 16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God? Did y'all know that you was the temple of God? God's spirit is trying to dwell in you, but the more you break his commandments, the more you reject his spirit. That's why a lot of our people follow the ways of the white man. Because you come to rejecting God. His spirit can't dwell in you, so then you take on the spirit of this demon right here. Then you take on the spirit of white supremacy. Because you keep defiling your temple. You're doing the things that the white man taught you to do. The white man taught you you can eat anything. Oh, God said it's clean. Just pray over it. And God gonna bless it. That's a lie. Read. And that the Spirit of God dwell in you. If any man defile the temple of God, you foul the temple. The foul the temple of God with drugs, with drunkenness, with uh, eating the wrong food, with bush meat, with the pigs, with the crabs. Read. Hornbuggering, sleeping with different women. Read. Him shall God destroy. It say Him shall God destroy. The Lord gonna destroy you. Defile in your temple. The Lord can't dwell in a defiled temple. Y'all understand that? So go right back to Leviticus 11. Verse 45. The book of Leviticus, chapter 11, verse 45. For I am the Lord that bringeth you up out of the land of Egypt to be your God. The Lord said, I brought you. You know we was in captivity in Egypt, right? The Lord brought us out of Egypt. He said, look, to be your God, read. Ye shall therefore be holy, for I am holy. He said, look, you need to be holy because I'm holy. You need to learn how to possess your temple. Read on. This is the law of the beast and of the fowl and of every living creature that moveth in the waters. Read. And, the, and of every creature that creepeth upon the earth to make a difference between the unclean and the clean and between the beast that may be eaten and the beast that may not be eaten. You, you got to make the difference between what's clean what's and, and what's unclean. What to eat and what not to eat. How do you make that difference by doing what? Reading Leviticus chapter 11. He tells you what you can eat. Like fish. You can only eat fish with uh, fins and scales. If it don't got fins, if it don't got scales, you can't eat it. It got to have both. Just like lobster. Do crab got fins and scales? Crab. Crab meat. No, it don't got fins and scales. Shrimp. Do it got fins and scales? No. It's a certain beast you got to eat. Uh, get that real quick about the beast. Start at 7. The book of Leviticus, chapter 11, verse 7. I mean, start at 5. Uh, verse 5. And the coney, because he cheweth the cud. But, verse 3. Yeah. What's Whatsoever parted the hoof. It say whatsoever parted the hoof, read. And is cloven footed. And cheweth the cud among the beasts that shall ye eat. That's what you can eat amongst the beasts. It gotta part the foot and chew the cud, like a cow. A cow chew the cud and part the foot. Uh it's uh, I mean part the hoof, it's cloven footed, it chew the cud. Man, it got multiple stomachs to digest its food. A monkey don't do that. Camel don't do that. 
bush meat. A lot of this bush meat that people eat, it ain't, read that again. Whatsoever burneth the hoof, and is cloven footed, and cheweth the cud among the beasts, that shall ye eat. Okay, here we go right here. Look, these animals, this is what it means to parb in the hoof. Parb in the hoof and to be cloven footed. Chew up the cud, it got multiple stomachs where it digests its food. You see that? He said, this shall you eat. Read on. Matter of fact, uh, don't jump on that. Hold this up. To Leviticus chapter 11. Verse uh, now. I want the one with the fish. Nine. With the fish. Verse nine. These shall ye eat of all that are in the water. Now he gonna tell you what you shall eat that's in the water. Three. Whatsoever hath fins and scales. It gotta have fins. It gotta have fins and scales. It gotta have both. If it got just fins, can you eat it? If it got fins and no scales, can you eat it? No. No. Why I say you? Why you can't eat it? Cause it gotta what? Use what you said, bro. It gotta have both. It gotta have both. It gotta have fins and scales. The shrimp, it don't got fins or scales. The crab, the lobster, the oysters, the catfish, it got scales, fins, but it don't got no scales. You can't eat it. The crawfish, it don't got fins or scales. You can't eat it. Like the rabbit, a lot of our people eat rabbit. It's unclean. A lot of our people eat cat, it's unclean. Cow, it's unclean. Snakes, it's unclean. Monkey, it's unclean. The possum, it's unclean. You can't eat that. The raccoon, you can't eat it. It's unclean. You can't eat the rat. You can't eat it. It's unclean. Y'all understand? You can't eat the fowl. Get 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Verse 3. 1 Thessalonians 4 and 3. What you got? You got a question? The grand sofa, can we eat it? Yeah, the grasshopper is clean. Matter of fact, go to uh, the Bitterkins 11 about the creeping things. Like 12, like 19. Let me look at it. 13 or something. That's all down. It's like 20. No, it did go right there. 22, read. Check it out. Verse 22. Even these of them ye may eat. The locusts. You can eat the locusts. Remember, John the Baptist, what he was eating in the wilderness. Locusts and honey. Read. That's right. After his kind. And the bird locust after his kind. And the beetle after his kind. And the grasshopper after his kind. So you can eat the grasshopper. You can eat that. You can eat that. That's clean. Alright, y'all understand? Now look, I'm going to show you something. First Thessalonians 4 and 3. We're going to get some more laws for you too. Read. The book of First Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 3. For this is the will of God. Even your sanctification. You hear that? This is the will of God. How many of y'all love God? How many love the Most High God? You love God, bro? So look, it says, this is the will of God, and this is what sanctifies you. This is what makes you clean, right? That ye should abstain from fornication. That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel. He said that abstain from fornication. Fornication is sexual sin. How many of y'all married out here? Nobody married? How many ever having sex? Tell the truth, who having sex? Okay, you having sex, you having sex, you having sex, ain't it? You having sex too, right? Okay, everybody having sex, but nobody ain't there. He said, you gotta stay from fornication. Fornication is sexual sin. You know what I'm saying? The Lord don't want, don't y'all know that, uh, since we, let's deal with fornication now. He said, this is the will of God that you abstain from fornication. Get Exodus 21 verse 16. Don't you know if you lay down and have sex with the woman, right? The Lord wants you to marry. You know that, right? When you lay down with our sisters and you don't marry them, you turning them into whores. And you making them hate their own people. Look, listen, read. The book of Exodus, chapter 22, verse 16. And if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed, a, a woman that's not, a maid is talking about a woman that's not betrothed. Not betrothed meaning she ain't promised to be married to another man. Read. And lie with her. And he lay down and have sex with that woman. So if you find a single lady, you lay down and have sex with her, read. He shall surely endow her to be his wife. You're supposed to make her your wife. God don't want you to lay down with your sister and then leave her. A lot of us, okay, we'll meet a girl, she'll be a virgin, you a virgin. And then after you get the pants, uh, you know, you get the cookies, then you leave her. 
You know what I'm saying? The Lord said, no, nah, you're supposed to mask that woman your way. That's one of the reasons why we got a lot of diseases in our communities. Why? Because we sitting up there, we having sex outside of wedlock. We going from one woman to the next woman to the next woman. Get Hebrews 13 and 4. Bring it out. We got to start back practicing marriages in our communities. That's how we can build a great nation. Because then you, okay, you lay down with the woman, you get her pregnant. Now she raising up the child by herself. You somewhere on the other side of the country. Now the kid left to, you know what I'm saying, grow up without his daddy. Some uh, women are leading, or lead, some women will lead the kid with their daddy, and hell, they'll run away. And now she got, he got, uh, the child got to grow up without the mother. That ain't the way the Lord wants things done. Listen to this, read. The book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 4. Marriage is honorable. They say marriage is honorable. We got to start back practicing marriage. We the Israelites. God wants us to be married. God don't want us to be whoremongers. His will is that we abstain from fornication, sexual sin. Read. And the bed undefiled. And the bed undefiled, read. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. Whoremongers is dudes that like to lay down with a lot of women. It said God gonna judge you. If you like to lay down with woman after woman after woman after woman, God gonna judge you. Why? Get through them in 23 real quick. Matter of fact, Leviticus 19. God don't judge you if you want to lay down with woman after woman after woman. You can't move like that. We can't move in that spirit. You lay down with a God wants you to make of your wife. He wants you to marry her. We got to quit whoring our women out. How you going to tell your sister you love her, you lay down and have sex with her, then you leave her? Did you really love her? No, you just told her you loved her to do what? To get some sex. Because if you love her, you lay down with her, according to God, what you going to do? You gonna marry her? Me. Number seventeen. Yeah. The book of Leviticus. Twenty nine. I'm on nineteen twenty nine. Nineteen twenty nine. Yeah. Read. The book of Leviticus, chapter nineteen, verse twenty nine. Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. We lay down with our sisters and pass her to the next man. It's prostituting. It's making them out of whores. Read. Lest the land fall to whoredom. And the land become full of wickedness. That's why in America, the land full of wickedness in America, Sierra Leone is full of wickedness. Why? Because we prostitute our women. We lay down with the women and throw them to the side. And we think it's cool. You know, we started at a young age. It ain't cool, though. Because it's showing what? That you got what? Hatred for your sister. And they grow up, they hating us. They looking at us like we ain't no good. Then when they see this image right here, they think now they think of this they save you why because we ain't treating them according to how the Lord want us to treat them We ain't practicing marriage like the Lord want us to practice marriage. That's why we in captivity right now Y'all understand? So if you love God, what you gonna do? What you gonna do you lay down with your sisters? You gonna marry her? You gonna make her your wife? If you ain't gonna marry her, what you gonna do? If you ain't gonna marry a woman, what you gonna do? Don't even sleep with anyone. Okay, you can't sleep with her. You can't have sex with her. I know he's like, look, I, I gotta have some sex. No, you don't. You don't have sex with him if you ain't gonna marry him. You understand? And you gotta be able to provide for him too. Take care of sisters. Take care of. Well, this the will of God that you abstain from fornication. Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. 
Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.